Well, it's that time of week again. We're going to do a week of meals. Hope you stick around. Hello, family. Welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. I am Vicki, and you're with Grammy in the Kitchen. This video is dedicated to what we eat in a week. We mostly cook just dinners, and then we build in leftovers to have the next day for lunch. Breakfast is usually just grab and go. We always have French toast in the freezer. We can always have a sandwich or whatever's left over from the day before. There's always something here to eat for breakfast, but we don't dedicate time in our mornings to cook breakfast because the husband's doing what he's got to do. I'm doing what I have to do. And it's just, there's no time to sit down and eat breakfast. So although we do cook breakfast occasionally, we don't do it daily. So it's mostly just dinners and then we use that as leftovers. Let's go ahead and get this started. So today's video, we're gonna make soup. The calendar says it's spring, but the temperature outside says otherwise. It is so cold in my area. What's the temperature like where you live? Are you seeing spring? I mean, the trees are budding, plants are coming up, the sun is shining, it's, it's spring all around us except for the temperature so we're having soup today so i went ahead and grabbed two of our jars of turkey soup starters and on the stove i have a pot of water coming up to a boil we're going to cook some macaroni because i'm going to make a turkey noodle soup but i want biscuits to go with this i was debating whether biscuits or cornbread i think i want biscuits so let's go ahead and make some biscuits, get those in the oven, and we'll get started on, the soup's gonna be simple. The pasta's gonna take longer to cook. Everything in this jar is just ready to go. I'm preheating the oven to 350. Let's make some biscuits. Now this is the same recipe we made last week. So we need two cups of flour. This is why I like having two canisters of flour in the kitchen. It just makes it so much easier when you're baking and you need flour. One teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of bacon soda, two teaspoons of bacon powder. We need three quarter cups of milk, one tablespoon of white vinegar, I have a stick of butter. I'm just going to grate right into this bowl. We want to make sure the butter is separated and well coated with that flour. So we're going to add our milk vinegar mixture. We're just going to knead it enough just to get everything incorporate into one beautiful dough ball. Make sure we're picking up all those bits and pieces that are falling off. Just using the dough ball to mop up anything we have crumbly all on the countertop. All right, perfect. Let's put some flour on our surface. And we're going to flatten it out to a rectangle. You're going to see all that butter in there. It's beautiful. All right, let's fold it in thirds. And pull the other one up. Here we go. This is where all the flakes, when you break open a biscuit and you have all those flakes, it's from this folding right here. We're going to fold it in thirds the opposite way. There we go. 
that's the seam. We're going to turn that to the bottom. Try to keep it into a square. That looks good. I have the 10 inch cast iron skillet. I have some butter on a paper towel. I'm going to coat this very well, the bottom and the side walls. That looks good. And the reason I don't use pizza cutters is because they make round biscuits. So then you got to take the leftover dough, form it again, do the whole flattening and folding to cut more circles. I do mine in squares so I don't have to go through the process. So we're going to get 12 biscuits from this recipe. So I cut the dough into quarters one way and then a third the other way. Some are big, some are little. It's okay. In a 350 degree oven, for 25 minutes. We'll check it on 20. So this is the same pot we cooked the macaroni in. The macaroni is in the sink and the strainer draining. And we're going to build our soup in the same pot. So I have a tablespoon of butter. Because so I'm going to make it more of a creamy without using milk. So a tablespoon of butter, a tablespoon of flour, We just want to cook the flour flavor out of this roux. I'm going to go ahead and start adding in some of this turkey stock from the jars. We're going to go ahead and dump the two jars of soup starter in here. I'm going to add a quart of turkey stock. We're going to bring this to a simmer, then we'll taste it for salt and pepper. Once we get the flavor to where we want it, we'll add the pasta. Pasta is already cooked. This meal is going to come together so fast. Let's go ahead and taste the soup to see if it needs any salt or pepper. Now when we make our stock and the soup starter, we didn't put a lot of salt and pepper in those items. So that way when we make the dish we want to make with the soup starters, then we can add as much or as little as we need or want. I always go light on the spices when I'm making my canned foods, but then when I turn it into dishes that we're going to eat, that's when I spice it up with some salt and pepper and other herbs. We definitely need to add some salt and pepper to our soup. So let's start off with a half a teaspoon of salt, and I need to fill my jar back up, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And this is eight ounces of macaroni. I cooked according to the package directions. 
had it sitting in this sink draining we're just going to go ahead and add it in here I did not rinse them because I want the starch to thicken up this soup just a bit we have that roux in there so that should help a little bit but the starch from the pasta is going to do most of the work for us look at that family how fast was that turkey noodle soup and the biscuits have two minutes left so the biscuits were cooking for tw 20 minutes I extended it for another five minutes so they actually took 25 minutes but they are ready the soup is heating up and then we'll be able to enjoy a delicious dinner of a homemade turkey noodle soup turkey soup starter that we made together from turkey that we got on sale after Christmas the broth we made homemade from the leftover broth after we built all the soup jars biscuits were so easy to make when we have the ingredients in our house so I figured since dinner came together so fast we'll make the husband's favorite cast iron skillet chocolate a lava cake so I went ahead and buttered this cast iron skillet but in this bowl I have a cup of flour a quarter cup of cocoa powder three quarter cups of sugar two teaspoons of baking powder half a cup of milk two tablespoons of butter that I just put in the microwave to warm it up some let's go ahead and get that in there now we need to heat up one and three quarter cups of water so I'm gonna just put that in here and stick it in the microwave We need two teaspoons of vanilla. Let's put that in the bottom of our cast iron skillet. spread it out a little bit all over the bottom that is good we're going to use the same bowl I have a cup of brown sugar a half a cup of chocolate chips I have some big ones and some minis it's okay it's not going to make a difference and a quarter cup of cocoa powder We're just going to make sure those the brown sugar is all broken up and evenly distributed. Let's go ahead and put that right on top. And one and three quarter cups of hot water. Just pour that right on top. this is going to go into a 350 degree oven for one hour let me go ahead and clean up my station and we can have dinner while dessert is cooking so here's the beautiful hot turkey noodle soup ah, smells so good and our biscuits doesn't that look gorgeous so we opened up two jars of our homemade turkey soup starter first we cooked the macaroni according to the package had that sitting in the sink in the strainer while we heated up our soup starter once we got it hot we tasted it, it needed just a tad bit of salt and pepper we put the pasta in there and let that cook biscuits were so simple flour 
baking soda, baking powder, salt, butter, milk, and vinegar. Super easy to put together. It was in the oven for 25 minutes. And now we get to enjoy dinner. Let me taste this before I call the husband in here. That is so good. And I like biscuits because I like dunking them in the broth. You can taste that butter. They're light and fluffy and so delicious. See how they just flake? That's from all the folding we were doing. Perfect. So we have 50 minutes left on the cast iron skillet chocolate lava cake and then we'll have dessert. We're going to sit down and have dinner. Once that dessert is ready, I'll bring you back and show you that. There is nothing like a bowl of soup and biscuits on a cold spring day. Yes, it's spring. The lava cake is done. We do need to let this cool off. And then we can have dessert. And that's what we had for dinner tonight. We had turkey noodle soup, some homemade biscuits, and now we just need to let that lava cake cool so we can have a delicious dessert. What are you having for dinner tonight? Are you making dessert? Leave a comment below and share with us what is your go-to cold spring meal? We're having soup. I can't wait to share the next recipe with y'all. Well, family, it's time to cook dinner again. So tonight, we're gonna have some of our frozen meatball muffin cups and french fries. I gave the husband a choice between french fries and mashed potatoes. He chose french fries. So come in a little closer, let me show you what we're doing. So this pan had this bag has seven barbecue meatloaf cups. So we're gonna take six. We're gonna put this one in the freezer. I have the oven preheated to 375 degrees. I'll let you know how long this takes from frozen till done. And then we're just going to have french fries as soon as that gets a little closer to being done. The meatloaf has been in the oven for 45 minutes. They're registering about 120 degrees. They need to get, needs to read 175. We're going to go ahead and throw our french fries in the oven. So I'm going to put these in the oven right beside the meatloaf. As soon as the meatloaf is done and the french fries are heated up and done, we're going to go ahead and have dinner. The meatloaf took 55 minutes. The fries took 30 minutes. Did you want any baked beans or anything? No. Uh, yeah. So I just opened up a can of baked beans heated up in the microwave. And that, my family, is what's for dinner. Just something really easy. The barbecue mini meatloafs we made together. Stuck those in the freezer. French fries we usually always have in-house. Baked beans, we've got those in the pantry. The meatloaf took 55 minutes. The fries took 30 minutes. And the baked beans only took two minutes in the microwave. Let me call the husband in here so we can sit down and have dinner. I'll see you in the next time we get together in this kitchen. It's time to cook dinner, family. This one's gonna be an easy one. I went ahead and took six of our mashed potato balls, mounds, out of the freezer. I have a pound of ground beef. It's been sitting in the refrigerator for two days, nice and thawed. We're gonna cook that up and we're gonna make a sloppy joe. But we're not gonna eat it on bread. We're actually gonna eat it on mashed potatoes. On the next video, you're gonna see a grocery haul. 
we're going to go ahead and use some of those items today. We're going to have some green beans with this meal. Come on over to the stove and let's go ahead and get started on this dinner. I have the large cast iron skillet on the stovetop. I'm going to drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. We want to get the pan super hot. Went in the freezer and found some frozen onions. I just want about a half a cup. And some green peppers. About a half a cup of that also. I just want to cook that a little bit. To get those vegetables thawed. Well, that's going to take a few minutes. Now, some of y'all know the husband does not care that much for chunky vegetables. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this in the food processor and puree it just a bit. Just so they're not big chunkies. He doesn't mind the flavor. It's the size that bothers him. And if I want to feed my family healthy meals that are home cooked and delicious. Sometimes we just have to accommodate. I think that's going to be better. pound of ground beef the hamburger is about three quarters away cooked I'm going to go ahead and add our garlic puck. If you don't have a garlic puck, you can always use two or three cloves of garlic. It's still frozen. We're going to use one of our frozen tomato paste. It's probably about two tablespoons. We just want to cook that garlic until we can start smelling it. Once we can smell it, we know we're ready to move on. I have a can of green beans. I'm going to add some salt. Some pepper. And about a tablespoon of butter. We're here the six little balls of mashed potatoes. I'm gonna add about a half, about a, I don't know, we'll say a half a cup of milk. Let those thaw and heat up in that pan. I can smell the garlic. We're ready to move on. In this bowl, I have two thirds cups of ketchup, one tablespoon of brown sugar, one teaspoon of yellow mustard, three quarter teaspoons of chili powder, a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, 
a half a teaspoon of salt. and a third cup of water. I'm going to turn this down to a medium low. We're just going to let those flavors mellow out together. The Sloppy Joes are pretty much done. Green beans are still heating up. We're waiting on the mashed potatoes and then dinner will be ready. So I have a little bit of pepper jack cheese. We'll add that in here. Now this is the one we know that's cross contaminated with beef and turkey. So we need to make sure we cook this really well. So back on the stove until that cheese melts and then we're ready. And that family is what's for dinner. I'll leave a link in the description below of the recipe I follow to make the Sloppy Joes. You don't need a can if you have the ingredients. So we're going to put a good heaping of potatoes. Sloppy Joe right on top of the potatoes. And some green beans. Family, doesn't that look gorgeous? Potatoes. Perfect. Seasoned perfect. And some green beans. Mm. Let me call the husband in here. We'll make him a plate. We'll sit down and have dinner. I'll see you the next time we make dinner together. So the last recipe we're going to make in this video is a crock pot chicken. I call it my Sunday chicken. So I got the crock pot over there. I have chicken and some potatoes. The crock pot insert, I do want to coat it with some olive oil. Make sure we get the bottom and the walls. I have six medium sized potatoes. So we're just going to put a potato. They have been washed. Put some salt. A little bit of pepper. And wrap them up in aluminum foil. And we're going to place these inside the crock pot base. Just like that, because our chicken is actually going to be sitting on top of those potatoes. The chicken I took out of the freezer yesterday had it sitting in the refrigerator. I do want to pat it dry. I have two tablespoons of our dry chicken rub. We're going to be using that. Do you want to put a little bit of olive oil? Let's tuck those wings back. Give it a good liberal sprinkle. I have breast side down, just a little bit of olive oil in the back, and some more seasoning. We 
me wash my hands. Making this dish to this point took literally five minutes. You can actually take this, prepare it the night before, stick it in your refrigerator. That way when you get up in the morning, you can take this whole pot with your wrapped potatoes and your seasoned chicken, put it in the crock pot base, and let it cook while you're out doing the things, busy, working, running the kids around here or there, and dinner's cooking for you. It's a great prepared the night before dinner. We're gonna go ahead and cook this now. I'm gonna put it in the crock pot insert, low for six hours, or high for four hours. I have errands to run, so I'm gonna put it on low. It is 12 o'clock right now, so this will be ready at dinner. So I figured since we're gonna have leftover chicken for tomorrow, possibly the next day, I wanna make some focaccia, some sourdough focaccia. So I fed the sourdough starter this morning. Now we're gonna build the dough and it has to rest for 12 hours. So let's go ahead and get started on making focaccia. It's alive. So I have the kitchen scale tear it off to zero with a bowl. And the recipe says we need 50 to 75 grams of bubbly active sourdough starter. And we need 375 grams of water. and we need 20 grams of honey. We're gonna mix that in really well. We need 500 grams of flour. nine grams of salt, so in this bowl we have 50 to 75 grams of sourdough starter, I did 75, 375 grams of water, 20 grams of honey. In this bowl we have 500 grams of all-purpose flour, nine grams of salt. Now we're going to combine the two. In the instruction it says it will be wet and sticky. So this is the way it's supposed to look. Okay. We're gonna cover it and we're gonna leave it right here for 30 minutes to an hour. Now this recipe is coming from the Clever Carrot. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go find that recipe. But we need to leave it here for 30 minutes to an hour. It doesn't do stretch and pulls. I'll see y'all in about 30 minutes to an hour. And it's time to shape our dough. It's been 45 minutes. I am going to wet my hands. I'm going to do a stretch and pull. She doesn't say you have to do this. 
I can't make sourdough without doing a stretch and pull. And that's really all we have to do. Now we're going to leave it here for 12 hours. And tomorrow we're going to bake some focaccia. It's the next day. The focaccia has been sitting on the counter for 12 hours. We're ready to go ahead and put it in our pan and let it do its second rise, which is going to take about an hour to an hour and a half. Don't worry, I did not forget about that chicken. We'll get to that chicken in just a minute. We're going to put two or three tablespoons of olive oil in the bottom of this stoneware baking dish. And here is our focaccia. So we're just going to dump this right inside the oiled pan. Use some of that oil to put on our fingers. Turn the dough over just so it would be oil on both sides. All right, we're going to leave it right there. For about an hour to an hour and a half covered and let's talk about the chicken the chicken was on low for six hours was not done so i ex put it on high for two hours then it was done we ate some last night put everything else in the refrigerator so the chicken is perfectly done and i have it sitting in this bowl and the potatoes, they're wrapped up in the aluminum foil. They're cold now because they've been in the refrigerator. But they are perfectly done. So this is a perfect recipe for us busy moms who work outside the house, have to run kids here or there, doing all the things. We can prepare this the night before, put it in the crock pot bowl, put it in the refrigerator, and the next day before we head out to work to do all the things we have to do, we'll drop the insert into the crock pot, turn it on low, I suggest eight to nine hours, or high for four to five hours, depending on how long you're planning on being out the house. And then when you come home, you have dinner ready. Perfect. I have the oven preheating to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to put the focaccia on the stove top so that when the heat's coming out from the back of that oven, it'll warm this pan up and get it ready for the oven. And it needs to bake for 25 to 30 minutes. The chicken has been in the refrigerator overnight. It is cold. But I do want to go ahead and remove as much meat as possible, just for easy eating. The legs I'm going to keep as legs, the drumsticks. And the thighs I'm going to keep as a thigh. And the wings. Now the breast, I do want to remove the meat.
This will not go to waste. So I'm going to put the bones in the freezer for the next time we need to bake chicken bone broth. I'm going to go ahead and remove the aluminum foil from each of the potatoes. Between all the meat from the breast, the drumsticks, and the thighs, and these potatoes, this is enough for the husband and I to have lunches and dinners for at least two days. So we ate a little bit last night. Sorry I didn't invite you over. It was just getting too late. And then we'll have this today for lunch, possibly dinner for tonight. And if there's still something in here, we'll have it for lunch tomorrow. And now the fricasha is ready to go into the oven. So we're gonna take our fingertips and just go in here and make some dimples. Perfect. It's got plenty of oil on top, but I do want to add a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And now we're going to put it in a 425 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. We're going to check these at 20 minutes and then every five minutes or so after that. So the focaccia was in the oven for 30 minutes. I did the initial 20 minutes and then added 10 minutes to it, five minutes increments. I just wanna to try to separate it from the side walls. It is hot and bubbly. It smells delicious. Right, let's try to pick it up. This pan is super hot. There we go. We're getting it now. Perfect. Let's go ahead and move it from the hot pan. Put it on our cutting board. Go ahead and cut it up into small little sticks. Cutting them about a, an inch and a half thick. So that's what we're having for dinner for the next couple days. Crock pot rotisserie chicken with some baked potatoes and focaccia. If you find anything interesting in this video, Go to the description below and you'll see all the links to the recipes I found. I'll also put in the, the recipe for my homemade chicken dry rub. You can make that as big or as small as you want and that way you have it to season chicken or any other kind of meat you like. If you don't mind, give this video a thumbs up. While you're at it, please subscribe. I would love to have you part of the Grammy family. Right over here, you're gonna see two videos. Go check those out until the next upload. They're either gonna inspire you to get in your kitchen or give you a chuckle. Either one is fine with me. Until next time, we get together in this kitchen and make a homemade, healthy, delicious, beautiful meal together. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye, family. Oh, hot, delicious.